Hi everybody, my name is Jax and I'm one of the creators at Isoteric Horror Studio and today we're going to be kind of doing something a little bit different than what we normally post. Um, we're going to be rating all of the horror movies that I have in my collection currently um, and trust me this video might be a little long. Uh, I'll try to speed it up as much as possible. So let's kick it right off. So I made a little tier list here so if any of y'all viewers want to uh, partake in this little tier list you can go for it so we have the tiers here we have s a b and c and f so s made me rethink my life really good movie so like you know it's a, it's, it's a good movie um, b is pretty good like it's pretty good um c meh you probably wouldn't watch again um and then we have dumpster fire and trust me there are some dumpster fire movies in here so uh, we're just going to kick it off. Uh, so the first movie we have is Silent Hill. Um, this movie, like, was good in certain elements, but, like, in homage to the games, it was just, it's, like, nowhere in comparison to them. And I think it had a pretty high expectation of it. So we're going to we're gonna put that in C tier. Like, it wasn't bad. Like, there were some elements that, like, paid homage to the the game series, but, like, acting in places was really bad. You could tell where the budget was lacking, like, yada, yada, yada. Um, Omen. This is the whole collection, because I didn't want to put all of them in there. Um, I say that, and I put every single Friday the 13th on there. Um, Omen is pretty good. We'll just leave it at that. There's a lot to unpack. The first Omen is really, really solid. Um, the second and third... They're more on the meh side, but the first one kind of makes up for it. The first one's kind of like a staple. X. So this is a new movie. Um, for the, those of you who haven't seen it that are horror fans, you need to because it is amazing. Uh, Ty West did a really good job on this. And at first, it's kind of like, oh, this is a really dirty movie. But it's got a really good underlying plot to it towards the end. Um, just give it a watch. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. Just spoiler warnings now, just in case. Um, next movie we have, Hostel. Hostel is a... I haven't seen this movie in a fat minute. It's been like three years. Uh, it was one of my first, like, I guess you could call it like four films um, that I watched. It was meh. It was meh. To give... It was meh. It wasn't that great. The plot point kind of sucked. But, uh, the Possession, this movie is Dumpster Fire. I hate this movie. It was one of the first horror movies I ever owned. Um, and it sucks because I wish it wasn't in my collection, but it still is. And I don't want to sell it and go through the efforts of selling it because it is worth so little. It is garbage. Just save yourself the hour and a half. I don't even know if it's that long. It's been too long. Alien 3. Um, let's see. Alien 3. I watched all of these in a row, so it's kind of hard for me to... kind of hard for me to, like, judge them. Alien 3, if I remember, was one of the weaker ones. That was one where they were off-world, I think. I may be wrong. But... If that was what I thought it was, if that's the one I think it was, it has that infamous scene with the shower scene in it. I think my first impressions of this movie is I kind of blew through it, so I'm going to kind of put it in meh because I've had no desire to rewatch it. You know, it's it's the same thing. Alien 2, it's the same way. Like, y'all can bash me for the Alien movies, but the only one I, like, truly remember is the first one. Uh, Alien vs. Predator, meh. It's, it's just one of those fun movies. There's there's quite a bit of these fun movies in here, which I go, I'll probably go into more detail on some of the more movies I'm more passionate about. My Bloody Valentine, meh. Dawn of the Dead, pretty good. It's a pretty good movie. I know a lot of it, it's, it's kind of like the in-between here, because I want to say it's like a really good movie, but I mean... The way I feel about X 
versus Dawn of the Dead. Like, I just praise X more. I would put it in, like, S tier, X and S tier, but it's not quite there. It's close, but it's not quite there. Um, Diary of the Dead. Honestly, this movie is, like, on the brink of dumpster fire, and man wouldn't watch again. Put it in dumpster fire, but I'll put it above possession if that says anything. All right, so we have a lot of the Friday the 13ths. And in my opinion, I think we're going to skip over the Friday the 13ths until towards the end. Here, let's let's kind of switch it up. Let's do seven. Seven. S tier. I love seven. I love this movie. It's more of a thriller than it is a horror movie, but... It is, well, I almost want to move it down. I'm going to move it down. It is a perfect thriller. It is one of my favorite, like, noir-esque detective films, and it has elements of horror in it, and the horror that is portrayed in that movie is spot on. Like, they got it really good. The only reason I'm putting it in A tier is because it's not solely a horror movie. It's more of a thriller, but it's it's an overall great film. I wouldn't say it made me rethink my life, but Faces of Death. So, for those of you who don't know what this movie is, it is like a compilation of, like, true depictions of death and then, like, dramatized death. I found this at a v, local V stock. It's like we watched it, and I I'm gonna put it in mint. We watched it, and I was just kind of like, okay, like obviously the ones that were I didn't mean to hit the mic. Uh, obviously the ones that were depicted as fake were really over dramatized. So I mean, I don't know. It's it's like it's it was okay, but like I'm not gonna watch it again. Um, let's just knock out some of the Jason ones. Jason goes to hell. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Like I don't know. Out of all the other ones, they're just fun to watch, in my opinion. Like there's nothing stellar about them. They're just fun, gory slashers. I mean that that's really all all they are. Twenty eight weeks later, um. So, this was the weaker of the two, in my opinion. I know it has, like, the famous track, the famous scene of the main character, I forget his name, the actor's name, running down from the, the house. Like, yeah, the, the opening scene of the movie is, like, one of the most notable. Um, and it's it's good. But I expected more because I watched this right after 28 Days Later. So, I mean, like, it's pretty good. It's on the brink of, like, meh. Like, I wouldn't rewatch it. But it's in it's in between the brink of B and C. The Descent. I actually like this movie a lot. Um, it's a... Came out in 06. It's pretty good. It actually surprised me because it, it had a lot of different elements of horror in it, and that surprised me. The Battery. This is an indie film, and it was made with no budget, and it's filmed entirely in a car, and it is so good. It is one of my favorite indie films of all time. If you, if you ever get a chance to watch it, watch it. Trust me. Reanimator. Really good movie. One of my favorite Lovecraftian movies. It is amazing. I have a big... I am a big fan of just Stuart Gordon based stuff in general. Uh, the... I think this was what? 2009 Leatherface? Was it 2009? I don't, I don't remember. They've had so many remakes that I just... It was over my head. Uh, this movie was Dumpster Fire. Um, this was the 2016 remake of Blair Witch. Um... I watched this in, like, 2017, right after it came out. It was one of the first horror movies I, had like, actually, like, analyzed in a way, I guess. Um, it, it's meh. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to watch it again. 
I have no desire. Dagon, another HP Lovecraft movie. I'm a huge fan of HP Lovecraft, so I'm probably gonna no, not this one. This one has its flaws, mainly acting. But uh the the theme and premise that this this film was trying to portray was was a pretty good depiction of Lovecraftian elements. Like it 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 was good. I have a signed copy right behind right behind me right there um it was it was good like it, it was good but see it's like i don't know if i'd rewatch it though probably not anyway mandy mandy is mandy's pretty good um and the whole nick cage nick cage has like you know had an uprising in strange indie movies and mandy's actually the better of them I've yet to watch his newest one, Pig. I've heard ever everyone has told me that is amazing. I have it back there. I just haven't had time to watch it. Um, but we are getting into some of the juicy ones. This is some of these I am going to uh, go off on. John Carpenter's They Live. I love this movie. It's a dystopian movie. It is so good. It is phenomenal. I don't hear people talk about They Live enough, and it kind of upsets me. But, you know. What am I going to do about it? Green Knight. This is an A24 movie. I love this movie. I love this movie. And a lot of people hated it because of the ending. And I'm doing my best right now not to, like, spoil movies, but this movie is a, it's a beautiful movie. It, it's, it, it kind of, I was kind of, like, in the toss-up of wanting to include this in, like, a horror-themed tier list, but... It does have elements of, like, suspense horror. It's very subtle, and it's more of a thriller and an epic. I mean, it's a poem. It's based off of what was what's left of a poem. So, but it, it's a really good movie. It is solid. The ending will be, it just kind of make you be like, what? what? It's one of those movies. It's really good. It follows. S-tier. That's our first S-tier of the video. Um... This movie is the first movie to actually give me just genuine nightmares. Um, this is a phenomenal movie with a phenomenal soundtrack. I envy the sound production crew because they 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 nailed it spot on. This movie was so good, and it's it's I mean like it's it's just unsettling. Like the whole time you're watching the movie, you're just unsettled because of the theme of the movie. And I'm not trying to spoil it, but I mean, if you're watching this video, you're likely a horror fan, and if you haven't watched it, follows you're you're missing out. So, remake of Friday Thirteenth, Dumpster Fire, you just immediately throw that in there. The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This one's hard. I'm gonna put it in an A tier. It's it didn't remake like it didn't make me rethink my life, but it's I mean it's the pinnacle of slashers. I mean arguably besides psych, which really isn't a slasher, it's more of a psychological horror. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre is solid. If you haven't seen it, you're really missing out. The Mist. Hmm. This one was pretty good. This one is really good in the sense of, like, modern Lovecraftian. And this is, like, the only Stephen King movie besides, like, what well, will come up that I kind of praise the a Stephen King iterated movie that I give praise to just because of the Lovecraftian and cosmic elements that this movie has. Um, like, there's obviously flaws. Like, the ending of this movie is, like, devastating. It's a good movie. Good movie. Zombieland. It's pretty good. Like, I mean, it's it's Zombieland. It's it's not bad. It's it's comedy horror. It's comedy gore. It's zombies. It's just a fun watch. Castle Freak. So Castle Freak is like. It's it's like it's okay. I don't really want to go into details because it's kind of a subjective movie. Um, 
I remember watching it and I wasn't like impressed. But I wasn't like, oh wow, this is dog shit. Like it, it it's not bad. Bells Have Eyes remake. It's it's not bad. I wouldn't rewatch it though. I'd watch the original over this one. Remake of Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, I mean This one's kind this one's gonna be in the D tier dumpster fire. I don't like this movie whatsoever. I'm a big fan of the Romero series. And I do not like this remake whatsoever. Exorcist 3. Pretty good. This is the only other like Exorcist spinoff that I would ever consider rewatching again other than the original. The first ring, pretty good. It's pretty good. Um World War Z actually is like in between the brink of A and B. I'll put it in B. World War Z is one of my more it's one of my favorite zombie movies other than one coming up. Um this movie like I watched it when I was a bit younger and it was around the same time that I started getting into like apocalypse type movies and I really got into The Last of Us and I would always like be deathly afraid that that was actually going to happen. Um it, it, it's good. It's not bad. It's not a bad apocalypse apocalypse movie, zombie movie. Um the ending's kind of weak, but can't win them all. Signs. Another S tier movie. S tier alien movie. I have yet to watch Nope yet. I want to watch it so bad because I've heard people say it lives up to signs. This movie scared the shit out of me when I first watched it. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Silence of the Lambs. Pretty good. It's good. It's pretty good. Chernobyl Diaries. I don't know. It's more of a D tier than it is a C tier. Like, it it tried to be good, and it could have been good. It just was so badly put together. It was just sloppy. And, like, the whole idea of, like, Chernobyl and being scary is such a, like, such a good idea to, like, branch off of, but they just poorly executed it. Original Blair Witch. Really good movie. I love that movie. It is, you know, obviously the inspiration for all found footage films, essentially. Essentially, I'm not saying it was the beginning. Um, but this is a really good movie. Land of the Dead. You know, I don't think I've actually watched Land of the Dead. I'm going to put that... I'm going to put that in F right now because I, I haven't seen that movie yet. Night of the Living Dead. This is going to go in A tier. This is the 1990 remake and I really enjoy this one. I actually don't have the original which sucks. I was going to get in the uh, Criterion collection but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, I actually really enjoy the 1990 remake. Um it's just, it's good. Like, it just feels like that movie just felt gritty to me in a way. It's it's weird. It felt gritty to me. And for some reason, it gave me, like, the same vibes that I had when I was, like, 13 playing Black Ops 2 Transit Zombies, which is obviously people are not going to relate to that, but I know what it means. So, The Changeling. I hate this movie. It's so slow. I hate this movie. It is one of the slowest movies I've ever watched. And it's so slow, and it doesn't build up to anything. You guys can, like, shit on me all you want, but everyone that I talk to that is a fan of this genre also shits on it, too. I I don't know why people praise this movie. It is not good. It's not. It's It was a waste of my time. Freddy vs. Jason. Honestly, I kind of want to put it up in pretty good because this is a fun. I mean, it's a fun movie, but I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rewatch it again. Like, if somebody wanted to, you know, rewatch it 
I, I mean, you know, I'd say okay, but I'm never going to go out of my way to rewatch it. So, uh, Stephen King's It. Let's do this. It's man, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna rewatch this one either. It, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It's it's like one of those fever dream movies. It's just like, what, what were they thinking? It's just one of those kind of movies. It's not necessarily that it's like bad. It's just the time period and the budget wasn't really that big on this movie. So and that hit it pretty hard, especially. When it comes to a Stephen King style movie, Evil Dead. Nope, he's not putting that in B tier. He's putting it in an A tier. Great movie. Favorite Sam Raimi movie. Uh, what is this? Aliens? Or is that Alien? I think that's Alien. Uh, if it's the Alien, um, it's a really good movie. I like that movie. When I this is besides Event Horizon. I'd say Event Horizon and Alien are side by side my favorite space space type horror movies. Um, I actually don't have Event Horizon. I know everybody does not. Uh, nobody's very fond of Event Horizon, which shocks me. Candyman, it's not bad. It's pretty good. Creep Show, good, good movie. Um, Howling. I actually haven't seen The Howling. I have it. I haven't seen it. I'm Legend. Um. Let's see. I'm going to put it in B tier. I like this movie a lot. It's... It's not necessarily like a straight up horror movie. It's more kind of like a psychological movie in a way. And it has elements of horror in it. So, you know, I don't want to make it seem like it's a psychological horror movie because it's not. It's more just a psychological thriller with elements of horror. But it's a good movie. I mean, it's a good movie. One of the. More notable ones from Neil Smith. Cloverfield. Um, this was a good movie. That that this this movie actually surprised me. I thought it was gonna be like stereotypical. But it it was it was good. Jason lives. Man I wouldn't watch again. I, I wouldn't. The fog. It's actually this is in between A and B for me, honestly. I love John Carpenter's The Fog, but I don't know if I love it enough to put it up there. Um, moving on, let's do... We can do Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep is pretty good. There are things that I would have changed about this movie, but for what we got in comparison to The Shining, I mean... That I think that's probably as good as it could have gotten, especially with like some of today's directors. Oh, let's do Twenty Eight Days Later. I'm putting this one pretty high up in the A tier. Favorite zombie movie of all time. Period. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. I actually like Part Two, um, and I know I was gonna kind of save those so late, uh, last, but I don't want to be stuck talking about um. Friday the 13th for the whole end of the video because that's like a whole video in itself and I'd have to rewatch all of them to give you an in-depth. Uh, part 3. I don't really remember much of Part 3, so I'm going to put it in C tier. Uh, I th think this is... Yeah, this is Friday the 13th, the original. I'm going to put it pretty high up in B. I'd probably put it above... I'd put it above World War Z. I'd put them right on top of each other. I mean, it's a staple slasher. It's good in what it is. The Exorcist, S tier. Amazing. It's simply amazing. This is the first movie to 
Because, like, it follows didn't, like, didn't, like, genuinely terrify me. Like, it just made me paranoid. Um, The Exorcist, it genuinely terrified me. And that was after I was, like, pretty seasoned into this genre. Um, So, credit given where it's due, The Exorcist is amazing. Like Mungo, I hate that movie. I don't care what anybody says. I hate that movie. I fell asleep during that movie. I even tried rewatching that movie. Trash. I hate it. I do not like it. Maybe I need to rewatch it because it's been a year, but I remember so vividly hating that movie with a passion. Waste of my time and a waste of my money for finding a copy of it. Jason X. I don't like I don't like Jason X. This is like one of the only like fun slasher movies that I just don't really enjoy whatsoever. Demon Knight, I actually haven't watched it yet, so I'm going to put it down there. Um, Psycho. I'm going to put it up next to The Fog. I don't think it's A tier, but it is like one of the pinnacles of horror slashers. So I want to give it credit. I do enjoy the movie, but it's it's a sl- I mean it's a slower movie, but it's good. Donnie Darko. S tier. This movie made me rethink all of reality. I watched this at 3 a.m. on a school night, and I remember just sitting there, like in my bed, just like, oh my god, like. Is this real? Like, what is happening? Freaking out. And, uh, yeah, that was that was fun. But uh, definitely S tier. If you haven't watched it, please do. It is worth the time. Overlord. I'm going to put this above 28 Weeks Later. I actually really enjoy this movie. It's a fun movie. And it's a... It's just, like, a really good adaptation of... Nazi zombies. I mean, that's what it is. It's it's good. It's good. Cannibal Holocaust. Okay, so I watched this movie once, and I did. I have it on DVD, but I didn't watch the DVD. I watched it on the internet. It's like... Like, I don't even want to put it in C. Like, I want to put it in, like, D. Because it's not... It's literally... People just talk about it for the shock factor. And I was watching it and like the depictions of like actual animal abuse, like the turtle scene. Like for those of you who have watched it, like you know that like that was real. Um, but everything else, like all the other elements were just so extreme. And that's how I feel like that's how I feel about like snuff films. Like August Underground. It's like there's no plot. These movies are boring and they're horribly put together. That's all there is. I mean, I'll give Cannibal Holocaust, like, the benefit of the doubt. Like, it was definitely a shock. I wouldn't even, I don't even want to call it, like, a Mondo film. But it, it definitely has the shock factor. I mean, if, I'm not going to rewatch it again because it's just, like, I don't care to. But, you know, that's, that, this is, these are all just my opinions. So don't take it personally if you, like, adore this movie. Or any of these movies that I'm putting in my dumpster fire category. I don't even remember what. I think this is part five. It's either part five or part six. Um, I don't remember anything from this movie. I think it's part five. Is it? Yeah, it's part five. I have this movie. I don't remember anything from it because I watched it so long ago. I watched, like, all of these slasher movies in a row, and that's probably why I don't remember anything from it. So I'm just going to put it in C. I I mean, I don't remember anything from it, really, at all. Color Out of Space. This is another Nick Cage movie. Um, So this is one of the most recent adaptations of Lovecraft. Um... It is, this one's kind of hard to talk about because, like, 
there are so many things that I wish they would have done differently and so many things I wish they would have put more budget in, but like they got the cosmic element really good. Um, but they took advantage of Nick Cage's like weirdness and it made the movie almost like awkward. I don't know how to explain it. It's, I don't know. It's good. Like I'm going to put it in good, but I'm going to put it at the bottom of B tier because like there are definitely things that could have been better in that movie like there were some characters plot points where they were just like completely obsolete just to lead to another thing and you're just kind of like why did you have to do that to to show this it was just kind of like you felt like you were wasting your time when the movie could have been filled with other things and related to cosmic horror because there's so much you can do with cosmic horror and that's what frustrates me so bad with some of these movies is like there's so much you can do, but you don't do it. So we're going to move on to we're getting some really good movies. I'm going to save like my favorites for the last. Uh, What do we have? We have uh, this is Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead is I'm going to put it in between. 28 Weeks and Overlord. I really like this movie, but I don't like it enough to put it in A tier, and I don't like it more than any of these. This movie, I watched at, like, a really weird time in my life, so it's, like, I remember it vividly, and I remember being, like, I remember everybody telling me, like, this movie is amazing. Like, it's so good. And I watched it, and I, I felt like I was kind of, like, disappointed. I don't know. Maybe I need to rewatch it. I probably do. Some of these, a lot of these, I do need to rewatch. Red Dragon. It's good. I mean, Silence is better, in my opinion, but. The Shining. This is a high A tier for me. High A tier. Like, it's on the brink of S and A. I love The Shining. You know what? It's going up in A tier. It is going up in A tier. It's an A-tier film. No, I mean S-tier. S-tier. S-tier film. Ooh, we got some really good picks. So the original World of Worlds, um, I'm going to put at the very top of B-tier. Because this movie, especially the broadcast, shocked the world. Um, and the movie adaptation in 53, I believe, was the release date. Um was like genuinely shocking to a lot of people of that era i watched it and i mean obviously it's dated but it's a good movie for what it is um, they did their best to portray it to, as as honest as they could to the to the uh, hg wells adaptation or original Ooh, we have some really good ones here okay so war of the worlds this is the um What's his face? Uh, Spielberg. Spielberg uh, remake. I love this movie. So much, actually. That. I have. Three different copies. Of it. This is. The full screen. This is the widescreen. And this is the limited edition one. Um. I actually have the Criterion Collection and the Collector's Edition of the original. But this movie terrified me as a kid. Um, and I, I mean, I could rewatch this movie over and over again. Like, the tripods in this movie are just, it's straight nightmare fuel. And they couldn't have got it more spot on. It's going at the very top of A for me. I love this movie. The ending, people can say... People can say it. I don't care that the ending was weak. That's how the book ended. And I personally don't know of any other way to display an ending like that. Maybe not with just a narration. And that's kind of where I was let down too. Is like, oh, we're going to narrate how it ended kind of deal. Because like, it gives the satisfaction of like a moving ending like less meaning. So we're moving on to some really good ones. Uh, so The Witch. We're also going to put this at 
a uh, top of A tier. It's not an S tier, but it is definitely a very, very high A tier. I love this movie, and obviously both me and my co-creator are very, very big Robert Eggers fans. Um, this was my first Robert Eggers movie. I watched it in 2017, and I was just like, what is this movie? And that's how I knew I like wanted to go into this genre and put my creative juices into it. Um, this movie is phenomenal, though. It's so good. There, Like I said, I don't want to ramble on anymore about these ones. I'm going to try not to because these movies deserve like video essays over them because they're just that good. Stalker. S tier. One of the only movies ever in my life that I've ever watched that made me like rethink the things that I like doing. The things that I want to do in life. And it, it I like it's kind of cliche to say like it made you rethink the meaning of life, but this movie like genuinely does. Um, if you get the underlying meaning of it. But if you haven't seen it, it's a long movie, and it is slow, but it's engaging. Like, the movie is genuinely, like, captivating. Um, it's one of my favorite, if not, it's probably my favorite film of all time, just in general. Um, it has elements of, of cosmic, kind of, it's not necessarily, like, cosmic, I guess you could say it is because it's like unseen horror, but it's more of the horrors of reality and it's a dystopian and I do like dystopians. Um, this movie is just phenomenal. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it. I'm pretty sure it's like, you could just like look it up and I'm pretty sure it's on there. I think it's even on YouTube. And I saved the best for last, The Lighthouse. Favorite Robert Eggers movie? Um, when I, my favorite horror movie of all time. I remember me and my co-creator, we walked out of the theater and we both looked at each other like, what the fuck did we just watch? What did we just watch? Um, and this was the first movie, really, that we got into, like, I guess you could say, like, abstract weird. And it's, it's, it's so perfect. It's so good. Every element in it is amazing. Both Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson's acting is just phenomenal. That's what made me... Like, a diehard fan of both Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. Because of how well they performed in that movie. It's so good. It's so good. And that's what, like, I was like, yep, this is something that I want to pursue. Is something like this. And that's when kind of, like, this whole studio... That's, that's where a lot of inspiration came from the most recent short film that we did. And uh, for projects that we're working on now. Um... We, we use Robert Eggers' inspiration quite a lot. Um, but yeah, this is a full rundown of the list. If you want to screenshot it, if you want to uh, um, if you want to comment some hate, go for it. I'd love to read it. Uh, I, th these, this is just my opinion. Um, these are the movies that only I own. I've seen a too many to probably put into a list i'd have to do it by categories but um if you guys did enjoy the uh, like this type of video I, you know i obviously it was pretty rough but i mean this is just like raw me really um this wasn't really planned i kind of thought about doing this today so i just was like okay let me just spend 20 minutes getting jpeg images of all these together and uh make a tier list of movies that i own um if you guys like like this kind of us rather than our just creative um, vomit into a YouTube channel. Um, let us know. Like we, I enjoy doing this. I enjoy talking about it. Um, and I wish I could go into detail about some of these movies, like even more like it was irking me when we got up to S tier movies, like just not to go off, go off on a rant about them. Not a rant, not a bad rant. Um, but like I said, if you guys do and did enjoy this video, please leave a thumbs up. Let us know, please. We 
our, your feedback helps us out so much with where we want to take the studio and like what we what direction we want to go so um i appreciate you guys if you've stuck out to the end of this video and uh hopefully i'll um receive enough feedback and uh find something else to uh sit here and ramble on about so i'll see you in the next one